Greetings, I just want to do a quick video today on especially regarding the abortion being passed in Northern Ireland and uh, sodomite weddings, gay weddings being legalised. Um, uh, that is very disappointing to many people but I just want to give some thoughts in the scripture. Uh, Psalm 73, sometimes we lose heart when wickedness prevails. Uh, so I thought to do this video, I'm going to give some thoughts on abortion. Uh, Psalm 73, truly God is good, good to Israel, even to such as are of, clean, of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my, slips, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride com compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth, therefore the people return hither. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How, have, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I, am clean, I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued, and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then, under, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one wake, awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to, to, to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the, str is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I will put my trust in the Lord God and I may declare all thy works. So I thought that was an appropriate scripture when you see all these things in the earth go and just evil becoming predominant and uh, it, it, it can uh, challenge your faith, it challenge your heart and uh, but we know from the word of God that the, the world's heading for judgment and uh, these things are going to take place and I was thinking we pray Lord we pray for peace we pray for the right things to be done but yet yeah, wicked prevails and then I thought of that scripture I thought well that's the Lord's purpose you know wicked free agency men will choose their own desires it's all through the scriptures uh, I read second Timothy today and reminded again of the wickedness and the the depravity of that, that will be in the last days and it's unfolding before our eyes and I'm um, watching the um, just a brief part on the news of the, the victory for the gay pride lot and the abortion rights and how it was done on the back of what about women that are raped well, I just want to give some thoughts about abortion well, if that was the case, why why didn't the court decide just to make it right in in those extreme cases? Why why the whole broad 
the broad um, acknowledgement of allowing it, the allowance of the everybody who who gets pregnant is entitled to abortion. You know what about uh, the rights of the 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 innocent life, the child? You know it's just um, a promoting pros promiscuity. So if you get pregnant and you don't want the child you want your selfish lifestyle you can have an abortion that that's what that's what the message um spells out and that i think that's you know it's so many people are disappointed by the decision it's not it wasn't done in i saw protesters where it's not done in their name yeah but that's that's the dominance of it's like brexit nothing it, it's all the same people the lgbt community abortion gay rights it's all coming from that heart that wicked that wicked mammon that um, abomination on the earth and these things will unfold and um, I just want to give some um, things I've learned about abortion it's it's big money it's big business and these people are foolish they don't realize what they're supporting getting behind these rights that they really know what they're supporting on the back of a you know a vain argument. Oh, what about women who get raped? What about, you know, it's so uh, unjust. It's such an unjust uh, judgment from the court. Even the arguments against it were just totally dismissed. The rights of the child. You know, it's. it's it, I don't think whatever ever was appealed. The decision was already made. That's how it seems. And and when you see this in the world. Uh, you can easily uh, fall into temptation and uh, sin and uh, react angrily or react in a world worldly sense and uh, go and fo you know go and take on all the world's problems. But but the Lord teaches us that uh, these things are meant to be. These things are going to come to pass. And I just want to give some thoughts and uh, some some comfort for people who who perhaps like me who, who struggle who struggled and uh, how that built me up in the Lord, how that just put my trust in the Lord. There's only only one person I really trust and love and that's the Lord and of course my brothers and sisters in the Lord but uh, ultimately and firstly my, my Saviour Jesus Christ, my Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, that's, that's, my, that's my Lord and God. Um, I remember um, when I was a baby Christian and uh, I was struggling with um, persecution and uh, voice to skull, familiar spirits and all, all sorts of machinations against my young testimony and I, I fell prey to the Mormon church and uh, one one day I was, uh, uh, the bishop wanted to see me, the bishop in the church and I was telling him about my uh, my difficulties and of course not realising it was um, an apostate cult, I didn't know at that time, I was, I was lied and deceived and naive and I didn't have a, a, a strong knowledge of the word of God and my testimony wasn't uh, established in, in by, by studying of the scriptures. But he said something really wise to me and uh, and I was telling him of my afflictions and he said well uh, you know look keep your eyes single to the Lord. And he, he said, "Imagine yourself in a in a in a in a space with a fence round the perimeter, and the Lord in the middle." He said, "Keep your eye focused on the draw, draw into the centre, and stay close to the Lord, and read your scriptures." That that was his advice, and that's true advice, even though it come from a uh, an apostate uh, um, Mormon bishop, but it was true nevertheless. And he said, once you do that, though, because all, all those demons around the fence, all those, all the adversity around the fence, it can't, it can't come in, can't come into your, into your space, because the Lord's protected you. The, the Lord's a strong man; and He sweeps all that out of your house. But if you turn from the centre and go up to the fence to, to fight, you're gonna, you're gonna get a rough ride. And that's where I was in my, my young walk. I was like backsliding and uh, taking my eye off, 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 off my first love and so I was um, easily buffeted and that's that's the trial of, of, of a, a new believer. So I just want to give some 
uh, comfort and uh, reassurance to people perhaps struggling on their own and getting tempted into uh, fighting, you know, fighting with your fist rather than your faith and your helmet of salvation and your, your shield of faith and your your the word of the spirit, your sword of the spirit and the holy word is to um, pray every day and uh, um, read your scriptures every day, pray, pray and confess your sins, pray for the Holy Spirit to fill your heart and and as soon if you do you get into the discipline of doing that every day the lord the lord won't leave you every blessing in the uh, of the lord's ours to claim ours, uh, he's there for us every moment but it's us that take our eye off him and get caught out in all the distractions all the temptations that we can fall fall into as many temptations of sin as many diverse sins now we can become despondent and uh backslide or we can uh, get uh, anger can overtake us, or worldly cares can overtake us, and we can like uh, fr throw our sword away and throw our shield of faith away and lay in with our fists. So there's so many things to distract us and take us off our that um, peace, to rob us of our peace and our fellowship with the Lord. And um, the Lord's had to build me up through discipline to remember to do that, to, to learn those things the hard way. And then, and then putting it into practice, gaining a testimony of his surety and his, his love and his mercy and his promise, faithful promise to answer when you call upon him, when you pray, when you read the scriptures, the renewing of your mind and the filling of his Holy Spirit and the, the soberness of a clean conscience. And uh, I just want to share that with anyone who's, who's struggling is to, you know, don't, don't give up, don't throw the towel in. Just seek the Lord. He's. It's all grace. I'm a person with um, executive dysfunction. That's like being broken. That's like your brain's broken, and you can't. I'll give you one of example of a, a, a guy I used to know, a friend of mine, had a motorcycle accident. Hit hit a lamppost. Smashed his brains. Smashed his crash helmet. Crushed his skull in his head. And he and he was all. Uh, his skull was all pinned back together, but he had, he had his per he didn't lose his personality, but he um, couldn't function. He, he'd get stuck doing up his shirt buttons. He'd start to do shirt buttons, and then it's like you lose yourself. You come d detached from yourself, and you have to you lose where you are. So you you come off the tracks every every five seconds, and that's like an executive dysfunction. It, it happens to uh, head trauma people with head trauma. But I, I was born like that, so I suffered some head trauma, and I believe that's in the womb through dirty, dirty machinations, and perhaps being um, taken away from my parents as when I was young, and and then mistreated in the, in a the hospital. Uh, these things will be uh, manifest in time, and then then I have a trauma-based dissociation, which is very similar. It's a similar symptom. You switch down in your boots so you know I've wanted to give up life you know just give up every five minutes but and the only way I've been able to cope is through through the grace of the Lord and and if I don't do those things that keep me close you know that for the Lord to uphold me it, and um, so I can remain in fellowship that's what I've had to learn so I have a testimony that they, the Lord's faithful and he will any any circumstance he will lift people he will bless people and he put them on their feet wipe their tears dust them down and uh, help them get through days that seem impossible and then the lord said you know you know don't worry about there's enough evil in the day to be worrying about tomorrow so it's to take one day at a time and um, i heard a testimony re recently of a, a young girl who'd suffered severe sexual abuse, violent abuse as a child, satanic ritual abuse and she said um, some days she just can't, you know, just doesn't get out of bed but people, but uh, brothers and sisters around her would, would get cross with her and I, I kind of screamed in my heart, you know, 
you know, you, you shouldn't be cross with people like that. You should be patient. And, and this sister said, uh, you know, I don't take any notice. If I if I need a day in bed, I stay in bed. And I thought that's quite right. If you you know, you know your needs, and if you, you you're struggling, you don't need to justify yourself. You need to work your own own life out, your own salvation with the Lord, because we don't all wear the sh same shoes. We've not all come from the same backgrounds. So it, sometimes you you need to take take a step back, and you may need to have a day of recovery and uh, and rest. Uh, but that you know that doesn't apply to everybody, and and, and you, you've got to be careful of overdoing it and underdoing it. So there's temperance, there's a balance. But if you need if you need that in your life, you need that in your life, and and that's between you and your saviour. And I have a testimony of that. There's days where I. I have to, um, you know, remain in a, in in my uh, in my house in in my, in my sick bed if you like, and and just um, have a restful day, and keep my eye focused on um, healthy things, read the scriptures and pray. There's other things you can do for the Lord other than um, witnessing on the street or making videos. You can you can pray. You can be a prayer warrior. You can have a prayer list, prayer life. There's so many things you can do on your sick bed. So I'm just going to leave those thoughts and that testimony and just um, share my, you know, frustration with uh, abortion. How people are made merchandise and how all this, where all this roots from. And I'm, I can see where it roots from because the, the, the holy scriptures are a discerner of men's thoughts. And this comes from the, the same sort of wicked behaviour that's stopping Brexit, and all the other, all the other um, gay pride and the LGB community and the um, the people behind uh, Extinction Rebellion. It's all the same to me. It's all the same voice. It's all the same water gushing out the um, sewage systems, and um, I only wonder, well, what's up the road? You know. Uh, are we about to be rescued or are we in for a turbulent time? Um, I don't know, but I just pray. I pray for the right things. I pray for peace and I pray for... Uh, I do the things that we're asked to do. Pray for our government to be forgiving, not to get angry, not to get um, frustrated, but just to trust in the Lord. So I'm going to close there and leave, leave these thoughts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.